I'm going to talk to you about caffeine. Now, caffeine is one of the most studied ingredients in sports performance. It has been shown to increase pain threshold with exercise, as in make your workout feel easier. It can improve aerobic performance and improve resistance training performance. However, there is a huge, huge drawback with this. Now, just because caffeine can improve performance on one workout during a trial does not mean that you should consume caffeine every single workout because we know that a tolerance to caffeine will develop over time. So if you are someone who doesn't drink coffee, you turn up into the gym, you have a huge coffee before you work out, you will likely have an increase in performance. However, if you have that same coffee every single workout, your tolerance will build and the performance enhancing benefits will diminish. Now, we know this. If you are someone that consumes coffee a lot, you will likely know this because it doesn't feel the same as it used to and you will probably be drinking more than you used to. And this has been documented in research. So when looking at people who are high caffeine users versus low caffeine users, those who consumed 300 milligrams per day or more compared to 50 milligrams per day or less, when given five milligrams per kilo of body weight, which would be 400 milligrams for someone like myself at 80 kilos, the group who were consuming more caffeine habitually had a diminished performance enhancing benefit. People, you will watch this and think, well, duh, like we know that. But up until recently, what we didn't have was a trial that looked at long-term effects of caffeine and how that affects performance. They essentially just start with people who are high or low caffeine users. Whereas this trial actually took low caffeine users and built it up. So what they had were people who consumed 75 milligrams or less per day, very low caffeine intakes. Then what they did was for the first week, gave them 1.5 milligrams per kilo of caffeine daily, which is a modest dose, just to kind of build them in because a high dose would give people side effects potentially. Then from day eight to day 28, they increased that to three milligrams per kilo of body weight, which would be 240 milligrams for myself, split into two doses. At the end of the 28 day period, they repeated a cycle trial, a trial to exhaustion. And the people who had been consuming uh, three milligrams per day of caffeine for the latter part of the trial had a diminished effect on performance. So what we know is that within just a 28 day period, three milligrams per kilo per day of caffeine is enough to diminish the effects, the performance enhancing effects of caffeine. So basically, if you're one of the gym bros that's having super high caffeine uh, pre-workouts every single time you train, you are not getting the most performance enhancing benefit from each workout. If you want to have the best benefit on an individual workout, it is best to not be a high continued caffeine consumer and basically reserve your caffeine intakes for when you really need it rather than just pounding the energy drinks every single time you work out. Now you might watch this and think, fuck you, I'm not giving up my coffee and that's fine. But if you want to get the maximum benefit for a single workout, let's say you've got a competition or whatever and you need to lift as much weight as possible on that workout, if you want to get the most from caffeine, don't consume a lot of caffeine every single day leading up to it. Low caffeine users will get a bigger benefit from caffeine than people that are already consuming high caffeine. So that's it. You can hate me if you want, but use the information as you will. I hope it's been helpful. If you've got any questions, please feel free to ask. My Facebook page is facebook.com forward slash Ben Carpenter Personal Training. My Twitter and Instagram pages are both BDC Carpenter. And thanks for watching. Bye.